Welcome to the Rustic Garden. Today I want to give you a couple of tips on how to grow tomatoes and peppers in containers. Again, this is my container garden and I'm growing determinate type tomatoes this year in my containers and I'm growing peppers. For many years I grew the indeterminate tomatoes and an indeterminate tomato is a tomato that will keep growing and I usually get four, five, six, seven, eight feet tall. I'm not doing that this year because I put in 41 varieties into the ground. So I decided to change it up a little bit and I'm just growing determinate tomatoes. Now a determinate tomato can grow anywhere from two feet to four feet. It stays smaller and sometimes it's a little bit easier to manage in containers. They also grow to a set height, a predetermined height, that's how they kind of get their name. And when they get to that height, they set all of their fruit so you get a lot of tomatoes at once. Once the tomatoes are matured and red and you pick them, the plant dies out. So one of my strategies this year is that when the tomatoes first set their green fruit, I'm going to plant a few more seeds, determinate seeds, in seed cells, and then I'm just going to replace these sometime in mid-July so that I'm going to get two crops of determinate tomatoes out of my containers. I basically use five gallon containers, and you can buy these at Home Depot or Lowe's. They're pretty inexpensive. If you have a local bakery or restaurant that's friendly, you can ask them for their containers that they use. Um, a lot of vegetables come in, a lot of different products come into the restaurants in these containers and they just throw them away. Back there I have two peppers. You can grow two peppers in a five gallon container. That's a poblano and a baggio. In here is a kale plant and I just did a video on the fabric that's covering that uh, kale. It's a red Russian kale and that keeps the white moth off of the leaves. The white moth brings the cabbage looper. So this is really a way to keep worms off of my kale. Here's another five gallon container with a banana pepper and a green bell. In here is a silvery fir, and it's known for these fine tomato leaves. So it's a pretty cool looking plant, and it it's really does look different. It'll set about 30 to 40 um, smaller type fruit, bigger than a cherry, but you know not quite a slicing size. And it, it grows maybe three feet tall. So it's a great determinate tomato with a good production, you know, a nice tasting fruit. Over here is a early wonder in a two and a half gallon container. Now you can use two and a half gallon containers for peppers. One pepper plant will grow really well in a two and a half gallon container. And I'm doing a little bit of an experiment. That's, uh, like I said, is the early wonder. So I have one in a smaller container and then I have an early wonder in a five gallon container. And I'm just gonna see if there's any real difference using the different size containers. Back here are bigger containers. These are like, I don't know, maybe 20 gallon containers. And I have dwarf type tomatoes in there. In the front is a dwarf a variety called Patio Princess. In the back is a bigger, uh, you know, maybe a three foot, a little bit taller determinate type variety called Subarctic Max. Some basil in this container and back there is two, uh, ver uh, two tomatoes called the New Big Dwarf and they will actually grow maybe two feet tall, a little bit bigger and they're supposed to have a nice full-size beefsteak tomato. tomato. Down there is a, in the smaller container, is a cayenne pepper again. In the two and a half size containers, you can grow one pepper. Back there again is another silvery fir. So I have a couple different things going on. I have dwarf plants that get about two feet tall. They're all determinate types, and none of these plants will get more than four feet tall. And my strategy this year, like I said, is when the tomatoes first set their green fruit, I'm gonna plant more tomato seeds, determinate types, in seed cells. So when these plants give up their fruit and die off, I'll have some more plants to put in, say, probably mid-July or a little bit later July, and that will get me two crops worth of tomato. Now, when you contain your garden, the key really is moisture. If you can't keep your plants watered daily or every other day, or if you're in an area where really your containers dry out, if they dry out one time, you're gonna harm your plants greatly. So to kind of deal with that, I make a container soil myself because it's a lot cheaper. I use 50% uh, peat moss and 50% really cheap top so topsoil or any kind of soil that's on sale at your local hardware store uh, or do-it-yourself store. Wherever you can find it cheap. You don't have to spend a lot of money. But the peat moss really holds water. So it's 50% peat moss really helps kind of retain the water in your containers. When I make it up, I'll also maybe throw in a handful of pulverized lime because peat moss can be acidic. I'll put in about two to three tablespoons of 
organic pelleted fertilizer, doesn't matter what kind you really use. And that gets your container soil ready for your plants. Once the plants are in there and they're starting to grow and when they get to about this size, you want to water them every about every 10 to 14 days with a liquid fertilizer. When your plants get to size, they really pull the, the nutrients out of the soil. So you really do want to keep a liquid fertilizer on hand and use it about every two weeks on your container plants. Hope you enjoyed the video and this gives you some idea of how you might get a container garden started. Please check out my blog at www.therusticgarden.blogspot.com and also check out my YouTube videos. Thanks.